I'm working through section three of organic chemistry in the first version of the 2020 NSC chemistry paper and section three of organic chemistry is always tested in question four of the chemistry paper. Question four reads as follows. The flow diagram below shows how various organic compounds can be prepared using compound P as the starting reagent. And here we see compound P that undergoes reaction one to form some compound that can either undergo bromination or hydrohalogenation, which would suggest to us immediately that compound P, sorry, compound Q is an unsaturated compound. That would also suggest to us then that when we form an unsaturated and a saturated compound, we know that this is a saturated compound or an alkane because it follows the formula CnH2n plus 2. That would suggest to us that this is a form of cracking reaction that produces an alkene and an alkane. And question 4.1 reads, write down the meaning of the term hydrohalogenation. Note here that we are not expected to know the definition for hydrohalogenation, so a general explanation is accepted, where the correct explanation would be something along the lines of the addition of a hydrogen halide to an alkene or an unsaturated compound to produce an haloalkane or an alkyl halide. Important here to specify that this is a type of addition. Question 4.2 reads, write down the structural formula of compound Q and the way that I did this is I started with the given compound over here which we can draw for ourselves and we can see that that contains three carbons, this carbon contains three hydrogens, this carbon only one hydrogen and a chlorine group and this carbon over here contains three hydrogens. And now because we know that hydrohalogenation is a hydrogen that is attached to a halogen. The halogen here must be chlorine, so that is HCl. The only way that this would have been possible was that if this started out as an unsaturated compound, meaning an alkene. And so we can essentially work backwards through a dehydrohalogenation reaction where we remove a chlorine and a hydrogen, and then that would give us the structural formula for this compound, which would then be an alkene, an alkene here shown with the double bond on the first carbon. Important to show that each carbon still only forms four bonds. And we must remember whenever we are asked to draw structural formula, we must include all of the hydrogens. So once again, because I have been given this molecule over here, a hydrogen halide or an alkyl halide, I can remove that chlorine and one hydrogen, essentially working backwards here, to see that I would have started with an alkene and then I can draw that alkene because I know the number of carbons and because there are only three carbons it would always be forming the double bond on the first carbon. Question 4.3 says reaction one is an elimination reaction. Write down the type of elimination reaction and as we have seen here the only elimination reaction that we know where you would start out with a single compound, compound P, and end up with an alkene that we have just found over here, and an alkane is a cracking reaction. Cracking, we remember there are two forms of cracking. The one is where we break it up into two alkenes or two or more alkenes and hydrogen, or the second type where we break it up into an unsaturated compound, in this case an alkene, and an alkane. Either way, we just call those cracking reactions. Question 4.3.2. Write down the molecular formula of compound P. And now we can do that because we know from question 4.2 that the molecular formula for compound Q is C3H123456. General formula for an alkene, C3H6. And so because this is a cracking reaction, we can see that compound P is going to be the sum of those two. 4.3.2 is then C3 plus 5, C8, H6 plus 12, C8, H. 
18. Once again, this makes sense to us because this also follows the general formula of an alkane, and we know that it is always an alkane that undergoes a cracking reaction. Question 4.4 now reads, write down the IUPAC name of compound R. Now, compound R is where we start with our alkene over here, and it undergoes bromination, where bromination, as the name suggests, would just be the addition of bromine, which we know to be diatomic, therefore bromine attached to itself. And so what we are going to form here, when we break the double bond in the alkene, we break the double bond and each carbon is now looking to form an additional bond. And so we can see that we would then form, I'll draw it here so it's easier to name, we would form a compound that only contains single bonds, hydrogens, where there are not bromine molecules, and both bromine molecules have now attached to the sites where the double bond was broken. And then this becomes easy to name because we can see that this is meth eth prop single bond, so therefore propane. There are two bromines, so dibromo, and those are on the first and second carbons. So question 4.4, 1, 2, dibromo propane. Keep in mind when naming these compounds, there must not be any spaces. This is one molecule and therefore one word. Question 4.5. For the hydrolysis reaction, we know that a hydrolysis reaction is one where ultimately we form an alcohol. Write down the balanced equation using structural formula. Now, because they have not specified what type of hydrolysis this is, there are, strictly speaking, two possibilities. The first one is where we start with our initial molecule. And we add either sodium or potassium hydroxide. That can be either sodium or potassium hydroxide. We know that the result is going to be that the hydroxyl group replaces the halogen, and so we would end up with an alcohol. And obviously, the remaining iron, the sodium or potassium, would then combine with the halogen that has been removed, either to form sodium chloride or if we used potassium hydroxide then we would form potassium chloride important once again when you are asked to write down a balanced equation using structural formula you must indicate every single hydrogen you also may not neglect the single bond between the sodium and chlorine or potassium and chlorine because we have been asked for structural formula and it is necessary to show the bonds there Another possibility here is to show hydrolysis through the addition of water. So it's the same starting molecule, that being 2-chloropropane, but now instead of adding sodium or potassium hydroxide, we now add water. The result is exactly the same alcohol, that being propan-2-ol. But the byproduct that is formed here would obviously now be hydrogen chloride instead of sodium or potassium chloride. But the main product is the same. And once again, because they have not specified what type of hydrolysis reaction this is, it would be acceptable to have given either one of these answers because both of them are hydrolysis reactions. Both of them form the same product. They just have different byproducts. Once again, important to remember not to leave out any hydrogens and when asked to draw it in structural formula you must show bonds between all different molecules that is question 4.5.1 question 4.5.2 then says name two reaction conditions and so the reaction conditions for our addition of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide are that it must be dissolved in ethanol, 
the haloalkane must be dissolved in ethanol and it must also be H2O in a strong alkali. There must be a strong alkali, a strong basic solution present. The conditions for the second type of hydrolysis are very similar where that must be dissolved in ethanol and there must be H2O present with a strong alkali. So once again, either one of these would have been accepted or should have been accepted as correct where the conditions remain largely the same.